the announcement during a meeting at the Kingston and St. Andrews Corporation meeting today, where he also delivered his final warning to vendors at Three Miles to go back to the market. Kalila Enriquez reports. Market vendors who've now settled at three miles have become a thorn in the side of the Kingston and St. Andrew Corporation who are finding it difficult to get them to move. The vendors moved there spontaneously after fire gutted sections of the Coronation Market two weeks ago. And despite efforts by the KSAC to accommodate them at more convenient locations, many vendors still haven't budged. On Tuesday, Mayor Desmond McKenzie issued an appeal for them to go back to Coronation Market, which he says has now been cleaned up. And I'm appealing to those persons who have remained at Three Miles. I'm appealing to them to go back to the Coronation Market because the market can accommodate them the mayor added that he won't allow three miles to become a semi-market and warned that this would be the last time he asks them to move, although he didn't specify what actions will be taken if they refuse. But we are not going to allow people to use the excuse to remain in the three miles area for vending. Mayor McKenzie admits there's still a lot of work to do at the Coronation Market, although he insists it's good enough for the vendors to return. City engineers estimate that the complete repairs will cost over $25 million. And he says that if there are concerns about Coronation's readiness, vendors can simply go to the D.C. Tavares Market in the Three Miles area, which has already been renovated for them. One thing's for sure, they cannot stay where they are now. And the chaos and confusion that has been created in the Three Miles area has caused grave inconvenience. Kalila Enriquez, CVM News. Help is underway for persons whose houses were damaged in Tivoli Gardens during the incursion by the security forces. Housing Minister Dr. Horace Chang today got a first-hand view of what will be required in the community. Minister Chang says it could take days before a price tag is placed on what needs to be done in Tivoli. Officials from the Ministry of Housing have been conducting assessments on what will be required to repair damage to ceilings, doors, windows and furniture. I wouldn't put a tent here. What we'll have to do in the immediate term is to try and see if we can make sure there's shelter for those who have no shelter. And then we take it from there in terms of what we can do to restore some level of normalcy to the homes. He made it clear that the consolidated fund will not be used for this project, adding that the funds will be sought from international donor agencies. I feel very confident there will be. I said, besides whatever we can reorganize and redirect in Jamaica, I'm sure donor agencies will be. The, the challenge of our in a city, this function is something that is recognized internationally. It's not only affecting Jamaica, it's affecting many developing countries. And I think in that international agencies are now more sensitive um, to the issue and willing to invest in it. But in going forward, the Water and Housing Minister noted that several changes will be needed in the community. Specifically, he pointed to the need to regularize the consumption of water and electricity in the area. As it relates to the storm drains, which police believe are used by criminals, this is how he responded. Storm drains have to be a part of downtown if you're going to retain the quality of the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And in any city you have them, you know, it's, it doesn't make sense stigmatizing, you have to keep them. The flying squad made a major crackdown on a passport and visa racket operating out of downtown Kingston. The lawmen and immigration officials made the early morning bust in an area called U.S. Embassy. Dara Smith has the details. CVM News understands that the police have been monitoring the location called U.S. Embassy located at 64 Johns Lane in downtown Kingston for quite some time. And what a significant discovery it was when the lawmen and members of the Passport, Immigration and Citizenship Agency, PICA, made the crackdown. The fraudsters were apparently catering to those traveling to countries all across the world. The search of the bogus location yielded 77 Jamaican passports, two United States passports, one Australian, one Bahamian and one Canadian. There was also one for South Africa as well. Perhaps the perpetrators were thinking of the imminent World Cup. 
There were also five British passports, two Chinese and a Barbadian. But the fine did not stop there. The lawman also seized 35 stamps and an ultraviolet lamp, two laptop computers, two cellular phones and 77 birth certificates, one digital camera, 200 blank ID cards and over 50 applications for passports were also discovered. A number of finished documents were found with information on individuals seeking the services. Investigators estimate that about 20 to 30 persons visited the bogus embassy on a daily basis. The lawmen say based on investigations, these individuals would pay an estimated $200,000 for the total package, that is, a passport and visa. Along with the find, two of the main players have been taken into custody and are now being interviewed by law enforcers. As investigators carry out further investigations into this bogus embassy, they are pointing to the successes they have been having in recent months in the intensified clampdown on these activities. Over the past two months, at least another two locations in the corporate area have been raided. The police say they are now monitoring other locations which they will be targeting in short order. In the meantime, the lawmen are warning that when they raid these fraudulent establishments, any individual found to be conducting business there will be charged with conspiracy to defraud. Dara Smith, CVM News. The opposition and other sections of the society have raised concerns about the levels of mosquito infestation. And although the health ministry has taken steps to provide some respite, it's believed this is not enough. More from Marjorie Gordon. The recent rains across the island have created a buzz among citizens as it has left behind an infestation of mosquitoes which continues to make life unbearable. So devastating is the invasion of the pests that residents are demanding a response from the authorities. We have a lot of mosquitoes in Waterloo. We need help with the mosquito them. Because as you go outside, only this we cannot do. Just a brush. We need help with the mosquito them. Please, we ask the authority to come and help we because we have disease broke out over there with it. And so the health ministry announced Tuesday that it has intensified its mosquito control program with fogging being scaled up in most parishes. But this exercise, while appreciated, is considered an effort in futility by some, including Portmore's mayor, Keith Hines, who believes this will only work if it's done in tandem with other strategies. Mosquitoes are rolling out left, right, center, out of every crevice and corner. But you cannot just fog mosquitoes, because if you fog them today, they're going to come back tomorrow. So we have to couple the mosquito fogging with drain cleaning. So once the drains are properly cleaned, then we can go in and put in all the fogging and the oiling of the areas that we need to do, and so we can cut the mosquito populations. In the meantime, the health ministry is urging individuals to take responsibility for ensuring a reduction in breeding sites, especially around their homes. As much as possible, persons should avoid being bitten by mosquitoes by using insect repellent, mosquito nets, mosquito destroyers, or putting screens on doors and windows. Marjorie Gordon, CVM News. For the first time since Contractor General Greg Christie raised concerns about the plan by the government to divest its 45% stake in Jamalco, Mining and Energy Minister James Robertson responded to the issue in Parliament today. He boldly declared that Port Reliant, which was once described as agents of the Chinese entity, which is favored for the deal, has not paid or was not paid by the government. However, there was no clear statement as to how Hamfang and another company came to know about the proposal as there was no advertisement. Viewed as an uncompromising public figure, Contractor General Greg Christie had declared in no uncertain terms that he would not be stopped in his efforts to dig for the truth about the proposed bauxite deal. Apparently, transparency and a competitive bidding process are issues of concern. This is a man who should be giving a statement about the transaction. However, there was a concession from the Mining and Energy Minister which Mr. Christie will no doubt pay attention to. Hong Fan's interest was put to cabinet it was, the plant was not advertised. I've already stated clearly that the market and the 
conditionalities that existed here would not have allowed for that, Mr. Speaker. The minister claimed the Chinese-based Hong Fan had expressed an interest in acquiring the shares from as far back as 2008, and it has by contrast with Chalco, China's largest aluminium company. As a further justification to negotiate with Hong Fan, it was claimed a proper due diligence was done and millions were being lost to maintain the government.